The reason why we don't have it on continuously is because battery life. And we were wanting to, to record for up to a year, even longer, using these devices. They attached on the nuchal shield, which is just behind the head. We anaesthetise the area, just with a local anaesthetic, similar to what you use or the dentists use. We numb the area, drill some very small holes through, and then use stainless steel wire to, to lock it into place, and then corrodible links, which will, will disappear in a year or two. And then it's to release the animal. Perhaps the most dangerous part of, of the operation is releasing the animal because the jaws are untied. And in this case here, successful release. And you can see the aerial on the back here. It's now heading off and it's starting to give us information. Sometimes it doesn't always go according to plan. This was released. The water is that direction and it decided to come back in this direction and headed straight for our boats and, uh, and, made, and was able to submerge one of them for us. They are the joys of working on crocodiles. We, in fact, congratulated this animal on a job well done. <laughs> Our satellite tracking work was, was based chiefly on the Nesbitt River, on the Winlock River and around Weeper. This is a close-up of the, the, the Nesbitt River. So quite a large river system. Here's a river mouth here. And in this river system, four animals were, were captured, ranging from about three metres up to a massive five metres in, in body length. And we were able to, to collect that data from those animals over, over a year. So just to give you an indication of the type of data that we've collected, this is one animal, which we can see moving up and down the river system here. This is over from September to, 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 to May. We see it going a fair way up the river system here, concentrating mainly around the river mouth here, in effect going offshore into, into uh, the, the ocean uh, off the coast there. The nice thing about this system is that we can look at several animals at once and overlay them. And what was quite remarkable with these findings was that we found that large males coexisted in the same river system. And so here's a series of, of locational fixes, including one down here, you would note, of the four crocs during October. And we can start to overlay them at various regions and start to see how they're sharing space within a river system. And so we have these, these four animals coexisting, large males coexisting in the same river system. One of the, the, the aims of this work was to see what crocodiles did around human habitation. Weeper, on the west coast of Cape York Peninsula, quite an important mining town, also home to uh, a large number of crocodiles. And here, five animals were, were tagged with satellite transmitters. And interestingly, we never got any around the township. And that's probably a good thing. They kept to themselves away from the township in, in various localities. We were also able to record some quite impressive movements of the crocodiles up and down the coastline. And here's just one example. The croc at the, at the start in the video, the super croc, uh, this is uh, some of his activities where he spent most of his time in the Nesbitt River, moving up and down that river system, and then decided to take a bit of a trip down the coast. Down it went into a kind of a swampy type area and then decided to swim all the way back. And so we're starting to record some quite large movements of, of crocodiles. The most impressive came next. And this is an animal that was located in the Winlock River. And on the side here is our, our, our data port that points as it moves down the, the west coast of, of the, the, the Cape and into the Boyne River near Normanton. And so this animal undertook a voyage that was quite significant. Went into Albatross Bay for a little bit and then travelled down the coast all the way down and into the Boyne River. This is a voyage of over 900 kilometres. Pretty exciting stuff for us. 
we are all aware that uh, rogue crocodiles come along, problem crocodiles come along. And the, the current practice these days is if there is a problem animal, then the animal is captured and is either put into a zoo or into a farm. We were hoping to conduct some research that prevented this from happening and we wanted to translocate animals away from an area to see whether they would remain in that location. And what we did was in three animals attached satellite transmitters but instead of releasing them at the capture location it moved them some distance. We used a helicopter for this, swung them underneath the, the helicopter, took them up and away to a new location. So translocated them. So here's an animal being swung under a net here off to, to a new location. So I mentioned three animals were translocated. One on the Nesbitt River, which I've just previously mentioned. Here it was captured on the Nesbitt River and then flown 52 kilometres southwards and released on a beach. What we found was that the animal had no problems going back home. Stayed around there for a short period of time and then swam all the way back, straight back into the, the, the river system. Obviously, that wasn't far enough away uh, for it to, to, to remain in that new location. The next one was captured in the Winlock River. Uh, the Winlock River is actually has the highest density of crocodiles in Queensland. And it was captured here, flown about 80 kilometres northwards to the Jackson River, actually translocated into a river system, a fair way up the river system. It stayed around there for a couple of weeks and then moved back, straight back into its original location. Still not good enough. So an animal was captured on the Wenlock River and flown from the west coast of Cape York Peninsula to the east coast of Cape York Peninsula. There it decided it would, would stay around for a while. For about two or three months it, it stayed around in this location here. And then on the 4th of December it was time to head home for Christmas. <laughs> it took off and purposefully, it seems, it covered 400 kilometres going up the east coast of Cape York Peninsula circumnavigating the tip, coming back down and then straight back into the river system to arrive on Christmas Eve. <laughs> so obviously uh, translocation is perhaps not an effective uh, strategy for uh, problem animals but I think there are other alternatives that we, we, we need to explore in the future. What is remarkable about those results is that here we see an animal that is highly aerobic. We, we often think as crocodiles as being burst predators, having rapid movements and they fatigue very quickly. But what we found was that over the space of 20 days, it swam over 400 kilometres, some days clocking up over 30 kilometres. And they're backing these up from day to day. So quite a remarkable achievement for an animal that we presume to be quite anaerobic and, and suffered from anaerobic debt. We just recently published this, this work about a month ago in PLOS One. This is a, a, an open access journal, one of the new generation journals which allow everybody, the general community, to access this information. Normally journals lock away the secrets and you've got to pay subscriptions. Here anybody can come to this journal and uh, PLOS One and type in uh, Steve Irwin and uh, this journal, this paper will come up. 